Howdy, I uh, just want to do a quick video going over how to use Questia, which is inside the MindTap link. Uh, and you need to do this for journal number eight. Uh, you might be able to do this on your own, but I wanted to go ahead and do a video in case you're having trouble there. A lot of things to click and it's easy to get lost. Uh, journal seven through nine and the topic for your medical essays due uh, tomorrow, uh, tonight, today being the 12th, uh, tomorrow being the 13th. Uh, first two paragraphs are due on the 16th. These are just going to be mainly a check-in, make sure you're on the right track. Um, and keep in mind you're telling someone's story and putting the research into it with this essay. Uh, so it's going to be something that you're familiar with or somebody you know is familiar with, not just a, a vague essay on, on uh, lung cancer or something like that. Also, it doesn't have to be life or death. You can do something on a peanut allergy or an, a or an ACL tear or some, some other type of injury. Uh, and those work just as well with this kind of essay. Um, uh, for next week, I uh, want to see the draft so far next, next Friday. If you want to meet with me before that time, if you have any trouble with the essay, I'm happy to meet with you. Uh, but those conferences are optional. It's totally up to you. Uh, but I'm happy to meet. Uh, just email me and let me know if you want to meet. Uh, full draft's due on the 27th. Uh, we'll do the peer reviews again. Uh, and then on the 30th, the peer reviews will be due, and then the essay's due on the 3rd. Uh, then we'll start working on the final essay, the double speak essay. So, uh, that's kind of a look at the schedule. Uh, for the journal entry prompts, see if I can make that big, here we go. Uh, for number eight, you're going to have to click on the MindTap link, uh, which is uh, on the content, content page, which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, you're going to get into uh, Questia and use their citation generator to produce a, a references page. Now I'm about to show you how to do that. Uh, what you see, what you're going to see is kind of, kind of neat, actually, um, once you learn how to use it. I uh, may not find a lot of sources on Questia, but it's good to kind of do a little research, get it to produce your uh, uh, references page, so you can kind of see how APA looks like. Um, but you may end up using some sources from here. And you have two free uh, weeks of uh, MindTap access to see if you want to, you know, continue pur purchase that and continue with it. Uh, that'll be up to the, up to you as well. Uh, but you're going to go to the MindTap link area on the content page. Uh, you're going to click on that link. Uh, when you click on the link, it's going to take you to a registration page, and you do want to register uh, because you have, if you're going to purchase this, you're going to have two years worth of access. And once you have this class, you're going to go through uh, Cengage to get use your uh, MindTap access. Uh, so one, make you have to create a user word or and a password. Uh, if you ever used a Cengage product before and you use the same email address, you might have to have them send your password. That's not some information people tend to carry in their head for very long. Uh, but it's good to write that down if you are going to purchase uh, your MindTap access or if you've already purchased the book in the access. Uh, what will happen if you already have the access code book? It'll ask you in about two weeks to enter that code and you enter the code and off you go. Uh, be a little patient. It's going through about 5,000 different servers to get to get through the system. Uh, but it should come up and it should look like this. Uh, if you want to look at your book, you can switch to unit view. Uh, and you can see the different parts uh, laid out for you. Uh, so if you want to read up on APA documentation, you can click on documentation, go to chapter 14 there. Uh, but we're going to go to Questio. Uh, it's over here with the little red eye. I have no idea why they used the red eye, but uh, I went on in on that meeting, so we're going to just do what they do. Uh, but you'll see there's a full version of the textbook here, and there's some other help sites um, that can help you out as well. Uh, but we're going to go to Questio. Basically, this is their research databases, uh, but also has a couple of neat functions. And again, you want to be kind of kind of patient. It might, might take a second to load there. Uh, and what you're going to do, uh, you can just do a search right away if you want to. A better way to do it is to go to projects. And you're going to see I have a few already going there. Uh, we're going to create a new project. Uh, and for you all, since this will be your first one probably, uh, you're going to make this your currently active project. I'm not going to hit that because I want to show you something here a little different here in a second. Uh, but if this is your first one, go ahead and make it your currently active project. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me know. Uh, you're going to hit save. Uh, then you're ready to do a search. Uh, hopefully, you kind of have a, at least one or two good ideas about what you want to work on. I'm just going to type in lung cancer, and it's going to come up with thousands of results. Um, if you want to look in books, uh, 
that's fine. They'll give you a good list of books. You might want to go back and narrow that down a little bit, like to small cell or large cell lung cancer or your more specific topic, um, diagnosing cancer or something like that. Uh, but if you're interested in a book, you can just click on it or you can hit read now there if you want to. And you can kind of see the synopsis there. Um, and if you're kind of like, well, I'd, I'd, that sounds kind of neat. I kind of want, might want to use this book later. You can just save it to your active project. And you can always go back to it by getting into that active project. Um, and basically, you can just keep doing this as you go through sources. Generally, you want to kind of avoid magazines and newspapers. They're not going to be particularly good sometimes. Academic, academic journals can be kind of good. But quite often, they're doctors speaking to doctors. And you might get like one paragraph in and go like, wow, this is a little over my head. Um, but if you get into a couple of books, I say you gotta be kind of kind of kind of patient there. Um, you can see the, the the different chapters. Um, you can just read through it if you want to, however you want to do it. But if you again, if you decide there's something you want to uh, uh, that you like about this, you might want to come back to it. Go ahead and save it to your active project. And if you do this a few times, uh, eventually you're gonna end up with a you know few, quite a few uh, sources uh, for journal number eight. I want you to have at least three. Uh, I want to, and what you can do is you can click on that project, whichever one it is. Here I have a bunch of sources. Uh, and the neat thing about this program is once you kind of have all these sources and you kind of want to start going to, to your bibliography page, it's called a references page in APA formatting. You can go over here next to type, click that box and click all the sources you want to have it cite for you. Uh, and you come down here to create bibliography. And we're going to choose APA because you're going to be moving to APA format for this essay and hit create. You got to give it a second. And boom, it does your references page for you. Uh, you can also use things like EasyBib, but if you're going to use something within Questio, uh, this is a nice thing to uh, have it do for you. Uh, it does a couple of things not quite right, but these are things we can cover in the, in the peer reviews. Uh, you can export it to Microsoft Word. Uh, sometimes it'll reformat it if you just copy and paste. Uh, but you can look at it and see what it's supposed to look like. And uh, it's kind of neat, right? Um, but that's what I want you to do for uh, number eight. I just want you to take it to Word. Let's see what it does here. My Word might take a second. I didn't have it up. Uh, but also, you, these are the same databases we use at Northeast State. And there it does. There's a nice looking references page. Um, and it's pro pretty much properly formatted for the most part. And that's what I'm looking for you. I want you to do three sources for journal number eight. And, and that'll just be the entire journal entry right there. Um, so you can see it's kind of a neat little program. Again, you have two weeks of free access. If you decide, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to write another you know, research paper again, you may not want to purchase it. Uh, if you're going on to other classes, you may may, may enjoy using this. Um, so it's kind of going to be kind of up to you. It's kind of a neat choice you get to make. Uh, but I wanted to show you that. Uh, again, those journals are due tomorrow night. Um, but if you have any questions about it, let me know. If you have any trouble accessing it, let me know. Uh, but we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.